Hey, you know what? What's the deal with menopause? I mean, they act like it's going to start again. <laughs> it's over. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what is there? A menopause start? Once the doors are shut, the doors are shut. I don't understand. Who made that turn? Come on. You know what? There used to be a phrase that was overused so many times. I used to watch this show 24 on TV. And these guys were committing some of the most heinous crimes under the sun. And all you'd hear was tenure resignation. Well, I talk about the geniality. Tenure resignation. Uh, you just murdered your cousin in cold blood in order to get the blueprints that were needed for your company to rise to the top. Tenure your resignation. Like, can I get a free pass like that? Tender your resignation. Talk about the higher ups. You get the ladder, you are sure to get a lot of passes. Hey, you know what? I had this idea. It was about a training course that I was going to run. It's called How to Rob. You know, you always have these get rich quick causes. You've got guys like Robert Kiyosaki and guys like Ty Lopez that get online and tell you, you know, this is how you got to market your way to the top. But what could be simpler than learning how to steal effectively? <laughs> so basically, you learn how to rob and get away with it. <laughs> Talk about get rich quickly. Alright, what's up, idiots? Welcome to another episode of the Joker Tech Podcast. Right. Where was I? I know this event is occurring tonight. And it's a uh, it's the last hour, but I just felt like it was an analysis that was not just indicative of the event or the main card. I think it's indicative of a lot when it comes to the perception of martial arts. See, tonight you have a huge, huge square off between, well, I call it huge, but that's kind of laughingly. You have a uh, square off between John Bone Jones. John Bones Jones and Anthony Lionheart Smith. Now, it's been well documented. If you've checked my uh, blog postings and my essays, etc., I'm not a loyalist to John Jones at all. What I am is a loyalist to martial arts, and I think a lot of times people just can't seem to process that. Same thing with Mayweather. I've gotten into it with people who actually think I'm a Mayweather um, hater because I criticize certain things that I don't like about his decisions throughout his career. Or if I criticize certain things about particular decisions and contests that he's been in, like the Maypack fight, um, I wasn't a big critic of the Maidana fight, but I just criticized the Maypack fight to a certain degree, and I also criticized his fight with Castillo. I'm a hater because of that. When in fact, I'm the biggest fan of Mayweather. See, people can't equate being a fan without being a complete blind loyalist. And what disgusts me is that that's the opposite. You are not an actual observer or fan of anything if you don't know how to observe it. Basically, I take the approach, 
some a, a certain individual puts this piece of workout or that piece of workout and oh I love it 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 it doesn't matter how trash it is because of the person who put it out I love everything they do and this person puts everything out I hate everything that they do because I just don't like the person but I consider myself a fan of the work I consider myself a connoisseur in what way so I'm a fan of, mar of martial arts and uh, one thing about John Jones, as much as I can't stand the way he is, he is a martial artist. He is an elite combatant. And I think, I think we've gotten lost in this whole puncher's chance nonsense. Even myself, we become too intoxicated with that concept and we forget. That's with a grain of salt. That doesn't apply so much when we're talking to the absolute elite. Part of what makes Mayweather who he is, makes John Jones who he is, even Anderson Silva, Sugar Ray Robinson, all the greats, when you are on that level, there is no question about the product you're going to provide. You're not going to show up <coughs> and be a bum on the night. It's not going to happen at that level. Now, with a journeyman or with a, even with a, a good, a very good fighter, a very good fighter can show up on the night and not be, and not be elite and not be great and be mediocre and very beatable. That's what makes them different. That's one of the reasons why, like I said, I gauge it off of the person. See, people, they look at the personality. Oh, him? No, we don't feel that way about him. So, no idiots. It's called what's actually happening in reality. For instance, DC. Of course, he strikes no one as an elite martial artist. But he is. Because if you look at him, no matter who they put him in there against, short of John Jones, no matter what they bring to the table, Ozdemir, Rumble Johnson, um... Uh, the Swede, I'm forgetting his name. Um, whoever. Gustafson. Whomever they put in front of him. He adapts. He'll become a striker. He'll become a wrestler. A dirty boxer. A clincher. Whatever he needs to do. And I'm seeing some signs of that from Tyron Woodley. But DC shows that. It's not necessarily just the style that you use. It's the ability to adapt. That's what makes you elite. And when you're at an elite level, the puncher's chance theory does not wash the same. You're not going to be a journeyman fighter and step in with an elite goat fighter. And oh, a puncher's chance. He's probably, he's got a puncher's chance. It doesn't work that way. And a lot of media and comment commentators, they like to get intoxicated saying that. But it's really kind of false to say that because when you say that you're discrediting the style the whole principle of martial arts is controlling the moment controlling your atmosphere understanding the dynamics of whatever combat situation you may find yourself in that's the principle of martial arts if it all came down to well it's all about a puncher's chance though you never know because a puncher's chance is all... if it were just that freaking simple there would be no principles of martial arts so this whole belief that everybody has, strong belief, that Anthony Smith is going to come in there, he's going to punch his chance, he's going to come in there, um, he's, going to, he's going to keep on coming forward, and he's going to uh, rattle and, and stop John Jones because you know he's got that puncher's chance. That's, it's irresponsible and it's ignorant to talk like that. Now for a break. Give it for the moment that you and I To own the world mind 
foundation Can manipulate a motion And tell you why Sorry never knew control And lost the light Had a little one who lost her mind Took it out on a little life So fast Kay was a teacher An artist who lost his sight Giving up on life Neither was hoping until they met and fell in need and lifting up where others fell, providing the world for those to cry. Steve said he Saturn in Paris before he lived a lie. Peter had a song he had to sing, had a woman who was a queen. The night he was performing, she ran away from that scene. These are stories that can end anyway When you educate in the power you rise You rise You rise A foundation Can be this way And tell you why Give For a moment Back You and I So it was my foundation Can be this way And tell you why Give For a moment you know how many times he would have lost the way that was the case? If he if he could lose on the night like that, he'd have way more losses and he wouldn't be John Jones. He wouldn't be elite. The whole people forget the whole reason why we have the GOAT discussion in any sport is because this person has managed to separate themselves and be elite even on off nights. I mean, use your head. Would LeBron James be LeBron James? If he if he wasn't the guy kind of guy that even when he's having off nights still is going to give you a, a, like a triple double pretty much or a double double, he's still going to give you a, he's still going to get his points. What do we say about every superstar player in the NBA? He's going to get his points. He's going to get his rebounds. Oh, we know he's going to get his assists. At that level, they don't have zero points on the night, zero rebounds. They don't do that. That happens with lower level players. It doesn't happen with the greats. That's one of the things that identifies them. Is that on their worst nights, they're going to get theirs. So teams have to game plan around that. If they fell down to to freaking scrub level, night in and night out, they wouldn't be who they are. Same thing with martial arts. That's the whole principle of martial arts. The same way LeBron has deciphered and he's talented at and has become an absolute guru at the science of basketball. John Jones has become an absolute guru at the science of martial arts. He's not going to walk in and depending on how the which way the wind blows, show up on fight night and be, and be a, and be a sucker for the left hook and get knocked out and then lose his belt. That's not him. Even GSP was caught off guard when he fought Johnny Hendricks. And he still won. A juiced up Johnny Hendricks. He got caught off guard when he fought a very dangerous Carlos Condit. And he still won. Because when you're at that level, you adjust. He even faced some adversity in his fight with um, Michael Bisping. Where he was undersized. And he adjusted and still won. That's what you do at that level. And even if you do come up short, it's only going to be against other elite competitors. It's not going to be against a journeyman. So as much as I respect Anthony Smith, we got to stop pushing this rhetoric. We have to go back to understanding the fact that martial arts is martial arts. The same reason you all want this guy to lose is the same reason why he won't. Now, 
when it comes to steroid usage, a lot of people are saying that Robbie Lawler's used up because Dana doesn't like Ben Askren, and so he gave him the green light. You know what? I'm not even going to speak against that. I'm not. <laughs> because I, I, I have long stopped defending the UFC and Dana White. They are a disgusting and corrupt organization. I never thought I would see the day that a lowly, blue-collar organization like the UFC has become overnight just as corrupt. Maybe it wasn't overnight, but they become just as corrupt as some of the nastiest organizations on the planet. You know, we don't call WWE disgusting even though they clearly juice their athletes because it's acting. But when you have uh, bodybuilding uh, is filthy, um, you have sports or, or leagues where they let their players juice as at one point MLB was like that we have so many filthy people juicing I mean and then you have a commissioner that sits there and he's kind of just okay with it Dana White's the president if you couldn't tell before by now you know Look how chummy John Jones and Dana White are. They now have an agreement. John's got to stop getting into trouble with the law because that's one of his downfalls. But they are going to, it's not just about looking the other way. They are literally shielding and covering John Jones and letting him be dirty. So again, he popped dirty for this fight. And we're going to keep going with the, with the new rhetoric now because the scientists that are on the USC's payroll are saying that, oh, what he has in his system is inconsequential, it doesn't mean anything, and so uh, we're continuing to research and we're finding that um, he's actually clean, he's fine. John Jones is freaking dirty, dude. He's dirty. I didn't want to believe it before, but when I hear things about him juicing all the way going back to college, look at his physique. Look at his physique. John Jones is not a muscular guy by nature. And look at the way the guy becomes the Hulk before every fight and now he's going to be allowed to pop with a picogram before each of these fights now meanwhile Dana White just fist bumps him before each fight it's disgusting and every one of his opponents his last two opponents Anthony Smith as well as Gustafson when they get interviewed they look like they look like a, a scared child like I know what's going on but I know I had better not say anything awry clearly you could tell they were flustered they know they're fighting a dirty dude. Right? That's the way it is. <clears throat> now that I've lost, I've lost respect for. It. And um, I really would like to see John Jones for that get knocked out. He's clearly dirty. But it's not going to happen tonight. It's not going to happen against Anthony Smith. So we'll see what happens next. Does he go up to heavyweight? Grow a pair and fight DC? Probably not. Stay tuned.